everyone. It is Anthony with The Boy Who Cried Flowers. Thank you so much for tuning in today. A special thank you for my team being here in the middle of a pandemic to shoot this video and help produce it. I want to thank Mayash for supplying, of course, stunning blooms per usual. And what we're going to be going over today is the second part of our two-part series of doing an editorial or Zoom wedding or stoop wedding installation. We are going to be using an acrylic stand. We are going to be placing a vase arrangement on top, but also doing a build out on. I've placed a heavy quartz crystal at the top with some butyl underneath to keep it stuck to the acrylic case. All of that, including the rock, is inside the chicken wire. And then it's rolled up into a sausage and then formed into the shape that I want and then taped off with some gaff tape and floral tape. This is just to make sure that this doesn't go anywhere while we're making our build out. Because I'm gonna be keeping these pretty close to the chicken wire, I'm gonna cut them pretty short. At this point, I would insert a water tube for longevity, but because I'm not looking for longevity with this, this is just strictly for the video, I'm going to not use them. I've kept the length that I've cut off from my dahlia in this case. Uh, you can use any hardy stem for this purpose, but I'm just going to insert these stems throughout the chicken wire and these are gonna create a little bit more of an armature. And it's great because you can bend the chicken wire around these, keeping them in place. So I'm just going in and I'm filling out this base, making sure that none of this wire is visible. Now, I'm gonna keep it pretty mass and solid throughout until I get to the end. And that's when I'll start playing with some in and out textures and creating some more movement. So as you'll see, I'm keeping the base pretty heavy orange. I've chosen dahlias for this specific installation. Something else that could be great and probably a little more cost effective would be marigolds. As I move up, I'm going to transition into these peachier touches of pink dahlias, right? And then at the end, I'll start adding in even more pinks and reds. It's very important that all your mechanics are completely covered, nothing's showing. You want that to be possible from all sides as well. Now you can already see this is taking really beautiful shape. It's just crawling up this acrylic case. It would be really fun to see something even inside the acrylic case behind it. It's another way you can add some more depth to this. So as you can see, the stems are going through, in and out, and back in so that there's no movement. This flower is locked and loaded. I wanna just take a step back, assess my shape, make sure I'm liking this color movement and the movement of the flowers as a whole. I'm gonna start taking in some more elements, like this beautiful rose. Just gonna reflex some of these petals back, give it a little more bloom circumference. Some of these, definitely these. Now, as I'm starting to move through my design, I always like to have my materials that I'll be using next close to me. I think any floral designer out there can agree that it just makes your life a lot easier to have these things near. I've also arranged them in the palette that I'm planning on using it, right? So I've got my pinks, my purples, my magenta, red, orange. My next intro will be some ranunculus. So here we have a few of our, you know, colors introduced to the palette. I've started going a little ranunculus heavy and with these dahlias really showcasing these pinks. Um, now I'm gonna go into this bottom section with some ranunculus. And I like to use these little budded guys, these brand new baby blooms. <laughs> They're so cute, right? I like to use these kind of like out and wiry, floating above everything. I try to have them face forward so their stem kind of, you know, disappears in the design. Again, all of these flowers that I'm using in this installation today would be prepped and processed prior. They'd also be tubed with water tubes so that it would be easy for me to just pop them right into place. So I'm very happy with how things are turning out. I just wanna make sure that I get a good look around the sides, make sure that all my wire is non-visible, that it's all hidden. Now, I'm gonna use some of these gorgeous lisianthus. I've removed all the buds. I'm just gonna open them up a bit, reflex these petals back, cut them short again. If this was for an actual event and not for the video purpose of education, we would be tubing all of our flowers for longevity. And I'm just gonna build out the sides with this lisianthus. 
All right, there you have it, everyone. Here is the finished part of our two-part series. I will be adding the arrangement from part one to the top of this, judging it up and making it a little more editorial for you. Um, but I wanted to show you the finished version. This is how you can turn someone's unexpected plan changes, like, you know, a new wedding venue, AKA their stoop or Zoom, into something magnificent and exciting for them. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. We have the finished product here. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Thanks again to Mayash, my team. And of course, I look forward to seeing you guys again. Let us know what you think. You can check us out on Instagram at The Boy Who Cried Flowers. We'd love to hear your thoughts. We'd love to see your replications or how you interpreted this design and how you used it to benefit someone in your life. Mm, bye guys.